Welcome back everyone, I'm Seth Aroth, and today we have a more relaxed video arranged for you guys. Uh, in the comments lately, you guys have been asking to see my load order. And this is, uh, this, is this has been a fun uh, coming of age, I guess, for me as a modder. Because when I first started out at modding, my load order was so small I could actually fit all these in the description on the YouTube channel. And I didn't really think much of it, you know, copy and paste 50 mods or so, drop them into the list in the description, and that's my load order. Uh, my load order is a little bigger now than it used to be, <laughs> 256 mods. Uh, so yes, they do not all fit in the description box on YouTube anymore. So I figured might as well do like a, a load order video and then maybe every six months or so I'll do an update and then I can just put a link in the description to the video on the current load order and then that way you, got, you guys can kind of keep up with how things are progressing in my in my build and what mods are working and what aren't. So I figured first off I'd give you guys if you're new to MO2 or you're thinking about trying it but you're a little intimidated I know all of this can be appear to be very overwhelming when you're first getting used to it. Um, when you're first starting out, it'll look something more like this, which is uh, a little less intimidating. Uh, this only has 50 mods on it. That's that's it. You, I can scroll through that pretty quick. Doop, done. And that's what you would start with. You get some basic mods to hit the, the largest number of things in the smallest number of files, and then you build on it from there. But uh, as you can see, <laughs> I might as well show you guys. So you have this little thing called profiles in MO2. And each one of these profiles is basically its own little Skyrim world. Uh, I adjusted the settings so that saved games are, are set in each one of these worlds, right? So it's a different saved game for the Master of Magic, a different saved game for NI Side On. And about half of these are currently in use. A couple of them are placeholders. Like I made one, some for the holiday seasons that I'm going to be filling in with mods down the road. Uh, I am working on a Halloween one this month. Uh, but those ones are kind of the special little projects. And then these ones that are kind of 1B, 3B, AB, AA, those are other mods that I'm, I use that to track which generation they are. Uh, load orders kind of build on each other, and you want to keep track of which ones are built off of the other ones. So it reduces the chance of conflicts. But this is my main, my baby right now. This is my, I have played this one up to level 40. Uh, running my Necromancer build and only had one crash to desktop in 40 levels of gameplay, uh, which was lots of fun. I think at that point I wasn't doing a lot of the main quest lines. I was just kind of bouncing around through different quests and hunting bandits and harvesting bones and building up monsters and creating my little undead army. Oh, right. Before I forget, or before we get started with the full list, uh, that I have in the left hand pane. I'm going to go through those line by line. I want to give you guys an idea. This is where the load order is particularly important, the right pane, because this is your ESP files that need to fi be fired in the proper order, otherwise it can all fall apart very quickly. Uh, most of these I actually order through loot, uh, and then when I have mods that have to be put in a specific order outside of loot, I make a separate note of that. So for example, with this load order, uh, I have three steps after I do loot. I need to make sure that the relationship dialogue overhaul is happening after alternate start, which is important because loot will automatically place it like up here in the 120s. So I have to manually put it down here. And then because obviously the patches that are meant to alter that file have to go after that file. So you got your relationship dialogue overhaul and then the patches related to that. And then all of the patches that I've made myself and uh, ask me in the comments below if there's a particular mod or a particular patch that looks interesting to you and we can go over that in another video. And then last but not least, I'm running a batch patch, batch to patch just targeting the leveled lists, which is making sure that loot shows up at the proper or, uh, level as well as um, dragons and bad guys. But this is where we start. So I usually start off with uh, game engine type mods. These are things that work on the back end or on the user interface to streamline things. Uh, Campfire goes up there too because it's one of those mods that you want at the top of the load order to affect as much of everything as possible. Uh, one of the fun mods I've recently been getting into is the combination of iEquip and Gamepad. Uh, that's been a lot of fun. It really opens up. I like using the, the console controller when I'm playing, even if I'm using my uh, my computer to play Skyrim, 
uh, just it's easier on my hands. I, I'm working as a web developer right now, so I use my mouse all the time at work, and it would just kill the muscles in my hand if I had to keep using my mouse when I played. Uh, it just helps using a controller to just allow me to work a different part of my hands uh, after work as opposed to just doing this using the same muscles for 12 hours a day. Uh, Sky UI is very nice. Uh, that opens up the user interface more, particularly if you're going to be using the MCM, uh, which is right there. That's a, a setting for it from Sky UI. That gives you uh, menus for your mods that you can access in game that are super helpful. Uh, a lot of these are you know, bug fixes, papyrus utility. A lot of these you'll pick up, you'll find a mod that you really like, and you just need to check what other mods are required in order to run it. And that's when you'll start picking up some of these because some of the bigger mods that do fancier things require extra mods in the background keeping them running. Uh, next, uh, I like to use these separators just to keep things organized. You can also uh, compress them to make it easier to store everything. Uh, right now we're running Obsidian Weathers and Seasons with True Storms. Uh, that requires a patch because I love me my wet and cold. Uh, actually, that should go down there. But in this case, yeah, that's not an issue. These are the, the, this window here is more for uh, textures and meshes. Uh, whereas this window over here is the one where you're uh, loading your ESPs and ESLs and here your load order makes a lot more difference than here. This one, uh, your load order only makes a difference if one file is overriding the other. Like right now my Skyrim floral overhaul is being overwritten by dark forests. So if they ever come into conflict, the giant tree is going to plop down wherever little flower is thinking it should be. <laughs> I prefer bigger trees, what can I say? So I've got my weather in my environment. Uh, Frostfall has always been kind of hit and miss for me. I haven't figured out why, but occasionally it will give me a crash to the desktop. If you're trying to build, one of the best pieces of advice I've heard about building a load order, at least if you're starting out, uh, eventually, I don't consider myself like a professional modder. I haven't built my own mods yet, although I do plan on do, do, figuring that out in a, in a year or so. But I, one of the best advice I ever heard was don't bring in mods that have a lot of bugs or that trigger a lot of crashes to desktop, even if it's an amazing mod, just so that you can keep your load order safe. So I don't bring in Frostfall right now because I haven't figured out why it's crashing. Uh, and I've, I've seen other comments on Reddit about it being super stable, so I haven't... I, I, that's my own bad for not going in and figuring out why that hasn't... why that isn't working for me. But I do like Frostbite. It's a little more subtle, but it still gets the message across, and it's got some pretty nasty debuffs if you're super soaked or super cold. So that, that's what we're running right now. Uh, I do love adding more vegetation, uh, particularly dark forests when you get out to the volcanic areas north of Riften. Uh, this really cool. It throws in like creepy big mushrooms and that kind of stuff. And the Skyrim floral overhaul just makes the, the wooded areas around Riverwood just brimming with life. Uh, I really like that one because it brings in flowers of various colors that you don't use for alchemy, right? Uh, when I'm playing vanilla Skyrim, I almost condition myself. If it's, a, if it's this color that stands out, it's something you can harvest. And I just ended up running around picking all the pretty colors. And <laughs> with the floral overhaul, it's like, oh, that's a new plant that is pretty, but I can't actually use it. Huh, that makes sense. Like, not, not all plants are going to be are going to be useful. Uh, I do like I Need, that adds to Immersion. I've been trying to get the Alchemy and Cooking overhaul working, but every time I bring it in, I start getting those crashes to desktop and I hate them. <laughs> That's my biggest pet peeve, is when it just like boots you out of the game and doesn't tell you why. So, again, that's one of those mods that uh, with more time and experience, I think I can get that working. I just, that's why I still have it here in my load order, just turned off. It's kind of a reminder that I want to work on it later. Uh, Vigilant is an amazing quest mod, highly recommend it. It is so much fun. Uh, it's definitely for a late game playthrough, and you will get more acquainted with Molag Ball than you ever, ever wanted to be. But it is a fantastic mod. It's one of the first New World dungeon mods that I brought in, and it just brings in so much stuff. I just put it straight into the game overhauls folder instead of the New Lands dungeons because it's just huge. Uh, we have Skyrim, a lot of these I've actually done videos on, Skyrim Underground, Fenderic's Magic World. I haven't done one on Clockwork yet, which is another really fun one. It comes with a really unique uh, player home and about five to seven hours of quest line. It's actually a, one of the few mods I've seen that really does a good job with a horror element that just 
yeah, it creeped me out the first time I played it. That That's all I'll say there. Uh, Dark End is another one I've heard come highly recommended. I haven't played it a whole lot, but I do know I got it into... It's been in this load order for a long time, and I haven't been crashing. So it's been working out just fine. Uh, I was doing Chantrell in the New Lands Dungeons, um, but obviously I had to disable that. That one actually has its own load order. I have a separate load order for called the Hermit Playthrough, and that's where I bring in a lot of the nature-type mods. Uh, for example, in Chantrell, they recommend using another mod called the Immersive HUD. It like completely removes your HUD, your compass, all of that, which is great for Chantrell. But I tried playing Skyrim with those limitations, and I got really frustrated because I'm used to using that that compass to find my way around and being lost in Skyrim is more frustrating when you're trying to get to location A to get a certain shout so that you can test your Thunder Child and so on. So I disabled that one uh, from this load order just because I, I keep most of my survival stuff in its own little profile. Although I do still love running, uh, I've been able to do all of Hunterborn's add-ons along with Scrimshaw and then Skills of the Wild is a nice adjustment uh, to the skill sets you get in Campfire that also works out pretty good. Uh, if you're first getting started and you don't want to get overboard with the different textures and overhauls and stuff, uh, JK Skyrim is a great place to start because it hits all the major holds and most of the towns within all of Skyrim. Uh, so the modder was doing this one hold, one city at a time, and then just combined it all into one. And one of the best reasons to do that is because it becomes just one file in your load order. Uh, your load order can only handle 255 ESPs. Uh, if you notice right there, I have 143 active right now. So I'm far away from the, the, the limit. But as you start adding in more and more mods, you get closer and closer to that limit. And being able to compress a bunch of them into one ESP is just a godsend. Uh, I have Glorious Fort Dawn Guard because I want my Dawn Guard to have awesome items and spells. You guys have already seen the video on Triple Triad. That's uh, an old favorite of mine from my Final Fantasy days. And I love having being a professional gambler in Skyrim. It's nice being able to roll into town in the middle of the night and just pull up a chair and gamble away some of my gold and try and beat someone at cards. Dungeons Revisited is coming. This is another one of those compilations. Uh, the modder went through the first eight dungeons that you usually hit in a typical playthrough uh, if you're doing the vanilla quest line and then basically doubled their size. He added in like mazes and nooks and crannies and, and other traps and stuff uh, that really makes them a lot more developed. Uh, I'm doing, the first one is Bleak Falls Barrow and I'm actually gonna be doing a video on that probably next week. Uh, but there are, I believe, eight dungeons in that pack right there and we'll be going into those at a later date. Uh, player homes are another really nice one. You, most player homes you can drop into a load order with minimal risk. I'm not going to say none because I don't know what your load order is like. But they have minimal risk because they tend to be built like their own little containers. Unless there's a lot of scripts and a lot of weird things going on. Not weird, but very involved, right? Uh, so for example, the LC Citadel is a really fun player home mod, but it has a, a dungeon underneath that has literally a hundred, over a hundred opponents that you'll have to fight in a short amount of time. You're outnumbered like 30 to 1, no joke. I'm not rounding up. There's one room where it's literally 30 of them against you. And I just haven't added that one into my load order. Um, just didn't fit my play style, but also because it uses more scripts and I'm trying to play it, play it easy. Trying to take it easy when I'm first dropping in mods. And then over time, I'll start adding in more more aggressive ones, bigger ones, and wait and see if one of them breaks the, breaks the game or not. Um, build Your Own Noble House is a lot of fun because you get it takes a lot of time to build. You build like a small town, basically, that provides you with income and resources. And then you know, obviously you get a king-sized player home. It's fantastic. Uh, I've already got showcases coming up for King of Worms, Queen of Dawn. That's fantastic. Staff of Shaldor, we already saw that. Leaf's Rest is a great little player home uh, that you get set up in Riverwood, which is a lot of fun. We have the Scarlet, which is a, literally a pirate ship that you build, and then you can travel to all the major ports in Skyrim, which I was just ecstatic when I found that. Uh, and Tirashan is kind of a spooky necromancer home type uh, player home, and I'll be getting into those too. Uh, eventually, once you start modding, you start realizing that all the drab, <laughs> it's kind of funny, it's like an addiction, right? Because I went and grabbed, alright, where did you go? You're hiding from me. 
JK Skyrim because I wanted all of the exteriors of my cities to look better. And JK made them look fantastic. And then I would go into Bellathor's shop or Arcadia's cauldron and they just looked drab and vanilla and normal. And I started itching a little bit and, and I may have gone a little nuts here. Uh, but most of these, let me just check. Only a couple of these are ESPs. Most of these are ESLs. Uh, meaning they don't do anything like this one, for example. Is that an ESP as well? Okay, there are more ESPs than I thought. Uh, they're beautiful. They just com completely change how... They, they just add in more stuff to each of these to make them feel more lived in, more vibrant. And I, I love JK's work so far. If I do start over this load order and try to do something from scratch, I might bring in textures and overhauls from other modders just to get more variety and see what else is out there but uh, for now i am perfectly happy with everything in jk's repertoire because i've been able to run it without any problem and i haven't had a lot of conflicts with anything else in my system uh, temple of the divine frescoes is so fun i like that one you if you put that in the t if you combine that with we should have yes combine that with jk's temple of the divines and when you go into the Temple of Divines, the, the, the stained glass windows behind the altars will, like, glow. And it, it looks fantastic. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, Forgotten Sweetie is a quest mod that is fantastic. I'm not going to give you a whole lot of information about it because I, I will eventually do a playthrough because it's fantastic. You guys have already seen videos on my favorite. I, I call these the monster mods because you ain't human by the time you're done with these quest lines. Uh, Growl, Sacrosanct, Undeath, they're fantastic. Uh, I, I've been meaning to put True Hybrid back in here, but usually when I'm testing out mods, I tend to be pretty focused. I haven't, I haven't done a full Skyrim playthrough in a long time because <laughs> I keep trying to feed this thing. That, that's, how it, that's how my load order doubled in size in only a year. And Wrath of Nature is a fun one because you can shapeshift into different animals. So for your Druid playthrough, that one works out pretty good as well. Although, if you combine it with combat mods, be warned. <laughs> I'll just say that. It changes the game. Uh, achieve that. We just did a video on that one. Uh, I call this character development. It's kind of stuff that goes in the, in, uh, in the, the foundational stuff for your character. Religion, shouts, uh, standing stones, enchantments. You can see I kind of grab... When I'm, when I'm starting a new load order, I try to grab one mod for each theme, in essence. I have one shouts mod, one religion mod, one standing stone mod... If you keep it focused like that, you drastically minimize the risk of conflicts and of crashing to desktop and other bugs because there isn't a whole lot of overlap. And, and I say that, and then I get into my magic stuff, and obviously I've got Odin, Apocalypse, Ordinator, Trumvirate. Druid Conjuration is a fun one. That's just one vendor that has a couple hundred Conjuration spells. Arcanum. Uh, in a later load order, I am integrating Colorful Magic. Some of you guys have mentioned that one in the comments. Uh, that one is coming. I am testing it out now, and it looks very promising. I've been playing that one for a couple of hours without any crashing the desktop. So that so far, that's been working out really well. Uh, so that's obviously... Magic mods are a little more, you, a little more complicated because there is some overlap there between like Odin and Apocalypse. They come from the same mod author. They have a little bit of overlap. So you have to make sure that they're loading in the proper order so that they'll run correctly but most magic mods you can just drop them right into your load order without much trouble uh, but obviously you want to check their compatibility section in there I'll always read the mod description before you add something to your load order just to make sure you're crossing your t's and dotting your i's combat right now is pretty wide variety this is actually a build that was suggested to me by one of you guys about nine months ago i think uh so we've got Smolden, Mortal Enemies, Ultimate Combat. Mortal Enemies is a fun one because it, it narrows your enemies' uh, attack box. Let's see. The attack boxes, yeah. So it makes them a little easier to dodge, and it really forces you to actually use TK Dodge to not die. And then, obviously, Smilodon and up, uh, Ultimate Combat punish you more when you get hit, so it, it forces you to be careful. And because I'm a glutton for punishment, I have to do lethal traps and subliminal traps. So they're hidden and they can kill you. <laughs> because I like things a little more difficult, I also have realistic AI detection. So your stealth builds, you won't have any more of that standing in the middle of the open, just behind someone walking up and stabbing them, particularly at lower levels of stealth. 
it's it's tougher and i like it that way but if you don't that's 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 whatever whatever combination of mods brings you joy uh next section i've got enemies again you'll notice i'm trying to f narrow it down rather than having one mod that tries to hit everything I've got a mod for my vampires, a mod for bandits, a mod for dragon priests, a mod for draugr and giants. Dragons, of course, are their whole thing. I mean, if you're going to do dragons right, you, you've got to, you got to go big. And then you can get some really pretty combinations. Like, I've, I've got, a, I think I've at least tripled the number of different dragon types in the game compared to vanilla. Uh, I've showed some of them in Deadly Dragons, including the Nether Dragon, which is my nemesis. The thing goes invisible. Who makes a dragon that goes invisible? <laughs> Just pops out of into view and then fries you. Like, good luck dodging that. But, of course, I keep him in the game because he keeps it difficult. Um, Fallower mods are another one that, in most cases, can be safely added into a load order without a whole lot of trouble, particularly if they're built with their own framework. So for example, Inigo is built in essence with his own brain. He doesn't plug into the Fallower brain in the game engine, he has his own. So if I'm already a companion with Lydia and I go find Inigo, he can be my Fallower as well because they use different Fallower engines. Whereas if I was to grab uh, Lydia and maybe one of the companions and try to have them both follow me, they would complain because I can only have one of those at a time. Uh, I've got followers for themed playthroughs, so Morgane is my necromancer. Uh, Lelisa the druid is obviously my druid. Uh, I've done a little bit with Lucifer. Ironically, he's a good-natured Argonian. <laughs> I don't know why they named him Lucifer. Uh, but yeah, a lot of my initial followers were... Like Inigo, for example, has like 6,000 lines of custom dialogue. Like He's a, fan, he's a huge follower as far as followers go. And then when you get deeper into it, you'll find much simpler, I don't know if simple, I mean, they're smaller followers, but they have like their own unique thing. I like things that are unique, you know, that you can find thousands of player homes on Skyrim, but I will grab the ones that are unique, like a pirate ship that you build and then sail around Skyrim. Like that, that is unique. Like that's going into my load order for my pirate thief. That's happening. Uh, and I had some followers that triggered the same thing. Like Hoth, for example, is a bounty hunter and he'll actually give you bounty quests on bandits while you're out adventuring, which I think is just, that's a great little like hat tip to that kind of a, that kind of a playthrough, I guess. Uh, Marcus the Knight is a paladin. So if you're doing like uh, a, a anti-undead playthrough, he would be a great one to back you up for that. Uh, what else are some of these other ones? Remiel. I haven't tried her yet, but she's like a Dwemer specialist. So she's like a techie type that uses Dwemer technology to fight, which I haven't seen yet, but sounds amazing. And then I've got a couple of overhauls to make these people look prettier. Um, let's see. We've got NPC overhauls. Uh, I, I like Guard's Armor Replacer because it makes every guard... Each hold will have their own type of armored theme, right? It kind of, it, it's one of the things I love about modders is they're really good at giving me something I didn't even know that I wanted, but once I see it, I can't live without it. <laughs> so the guard's armor replacer gives different uniforms, in essence, to the guards in each hold, right? So the Morthal guards will have more Dremor themed armor. And then your solitude guards are more expensive and polished and fancier, for lack of a better word. And then your rifted ones are less so. But that way, like, the guards all look unique in each hold, rather than all the guards across Skyrim in the middle of a civil war when they're very divided against each other, all being dressed the same. Which is, yeah, that big fan of that. Um, Bijan does an amazing job overhauling so many NPCs. Um, Lydia, for example, is one of my favorites. She looks fantastic after this overhaul. And Serana, I'm a huge... You, I don't think you guys have seen her a whole lot in my Lodor, in my videos thus far, but I, I found a version of her that I really like. Serana is actually... It, it's, she is by far the most popular follower in Skyrim. A lot of the mods that overhaul like two dozen followers will specifically not touch Serana because there's already so many mods out there for her. And they know you're just going to pick the one that's your favorite anyway. Uh, men of Winter is a nice one for overhauling, obviously, the men of Skyrim, giving them a different look. Uh, highly recommend interesting NPCs. Not only does it add more NPCs throughout all of Skyrim, but it, it does a great job with custom voice dialogue that just adds a lot more depth 
which is ironic because usually I'm on a mission, I'm trying to fulfill a quest, and I don't really have time to walk around the inn talking to everybody, but I like knowing that if I did, I would have a more fulfilled tavern experience. <laughs> Uh, so this is one of the immersive wenches is another one that I add in so that there are more in essence waitresses and serving staff around the taverns. I think that makes a lot of sense and makes it feel a little more immersive when I come into the inn and there's already someone there with a, you know, a tray table and some drinks. Uh, Become a bard is a nice one. I don't think I've done a video on that yet, but basically it allows you to pay for your room by, by performing for the tavern instead of just dropping them 10 gold and going upstairs. I really like the idea of combining that with uh, there's a mod that makes taverns more expensive and that's a great way around that you know make the taverns cost 200 gold a night to stay and then become a bard and sing your way to uh, free food uh, items I've got immersive armor and immersive weapons uh, those are both fantastic mods plenty of variety I keep finding new stuff in every playthrough uh, it's kind of like with the oh where's my enchanting mod yeah with summer mist it brings in so many enchantments. I have gone through entire playthroughs and still come across new enchantments. That's how much variety there is in mods like these, which are just fantastic. I've already showed you guys wearable lanterns. That's great. Uh, Ars Metallica uh, upgrades the smithing. It just makes sense to me that while you're mining, you're also gaining a smithing skill because it's all a connected part of the process. That just makes sense to me. Zim's Immersive Artifacts is really cool, but I've had a hard time figuring out how to showcase it because basically it takes most of the quest items, like the stuff at the end of your major play, major quests, loots for the College of Winterhold, for the main quest line, for the Companions quest line, overhauls them to make them just awesome. Like Zim's version of Dawnbreaker literally sets Undead on fire and then they explode. <laughs> it's so fun. But at the same time, I can't just hop into the game and grab them all and then show them all to you without doing a 40-hour playthrough to unlock them all. Unless I figure out a command line option to allow me to steal quest items. That might be the next thing I need to learn from the command line. Anyway, so that gets me into character creation. Uh, I'm a big fan of Race Menu. It's a great way to customize your character build so you're not just stuck with vanilla presets. And then I've uh, been combining that chaos hairdos, brows, and beards. That kind of, again, just one mod for each major body part. And then once you ha have a load order that's functioning, that has one mod for each ma major body part, each major theme, then you can start adding in more mods and more mods until something breaks, as it inevitably will, because we have a certifiable addiction. All right. Then we've got races of Skyrim. That's important. I love making eyes glow. Starlight eyes is fantastic. I have just been figuring out how to use Caliente's Beautiful Bodies Enhancer alongside Body Slide. So now I have custom bodies for my characters. It makes them feel so much more legit and immersive and not vanilla, and I love it. Uh, last but not least, we've got the textures. Uh, I've got Smim, obviously. Uh, EMB Light is part of what was recommended for the Rudy EMB that I'm using right now. Uh, your Ruins Clutter, your High Poly Project... Uh, a couple of these are actually overriding each other quite a bit. I think Skyrim 2018 and Noble Skyrim have a lot of textures for the same items, and I just use Noble last because I like that stuff a little more, and it'll overwrite anything in 2018 that they have in common, and then I'll still get Noble on top of that. Um, other than that, we've got a couple more settings for the EMB, and then I like you can also get a mod to replace your main menu, and your loading screen. So I, I really like those ones to, they, they make your whole experience feel more customized and, and unique, especially when your load order screens are different and it's not the vanilla ones every time you fast travel. I love that. Uh, I've just started using uh, Fora's new idols, which gives you more animations. I haven't brought in any animation mods yet. So right now I'm just using the basic animation to allow your female NPCs to have a little more of a swish in their hips, which Feels more immersive to me. Uh, cannot live without alternate start. I do not want to do that carriage ride ever again if I can avoid it. <laughs> so I've got a bunch of extensions for that to make that work. And then I've got my patches. Uh, lots and lots of patches. Uh, the bashed patch was easier to put together than I expected. And the rest of these I actually made myself. And uh, I know that seems overwhelming when you're first getting started. But it's, it's not that bad. At least if you're careful about it. 
uh, you'll you you once you watch a couple tutorials, you'll figure out what elements of a mod are safe to tinker with and which aren't. Uh, you know, I might as well show you guys real quick. Uh, this is going to take a minute to run because it's compiling all of my mods at one time. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to show you guys. You guys have been wonderful the last couple of years making suggestions and at, asking me to review mods. So I just wanted to show you guys, when I tell you that I have added a mod to my list, I am serious. I am adding your mods to my list. And that list is over 100 mods long. Uh, you guys have been a wealth of information and you guys always bring to mind mods that I've never even found that are fantastic. And as you can see, I'm pushing 200 now. And yeah, Colorful Magic, I just installed that last week and started playing with it. So I am working on this stuff. But I just want to let you guys know, you, you guys, your stuff is in the queue. I have recorded them all, complete with the links, even who recommended them in the first place, and what the, the mod is particularly noted for. So I'm doing the best I can to make sure all your guys' comments are being put to good use. And, ah, and here we are. Okay, so just to show you guys a simple patch that I did... Uh, this is my Bidgen patch. There was some conflicts when I was trying to make the Bidgen overhaul work. Um, so my problem was when I loaded Bidgen, uh, alternate start goes at the end of your load order because it's obviously if something breaks right when you're trying to start the game, you're already, you're, you're already sunk at that point. So my problem was alternate start wasn't catching the face of Delphine. It was overriding it to be nothing. So Delphine ended up with a bug that's called, ironically, blackface because she didn't have a face. It was just a black, empty sketch. So what we have here is Bidgen has certain stats for Delphine and then Alternate Start has certain stats for Delphine and they're in conflict. So I went ahead and took her stats and just carried them over into my Bidgen patch. And then I did the same thing for her Magicka. But what really saved me was I took her physical appearance from Bidgen and just plopped it right over into this patch. So basically I'm combining the elements from Alternate Start and the elements from Bidgen into one so that Delphine can have a face. And, and that's really all that I did to make this patch. Uh, some of this other stuff got carried over automatically because I decided to base it off of Bidgen. So a lot of it just went over automatically. But the only things that I really, I mean, there's some stats that I brought over and then her physical appearance was the main thing that I brought over. And that's all that, that's, that's in that patch. Uh, we got a couple other characters from that got adjusted from Dawn Guard. I think it's just the equipment that they start with. Yeah, so Darn God Arsenal is designed to add in some new specialized weapons, but because it adds in specialized weapons, it doesn't include all their regular perks and stuff. So I had to grab the perks from Bidgen and add them to a patch, overriding what Dawn Guard had deleted. And as you can see, I've, I've kept this stuff here, and I've ignored that stuff there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all I've really done. And, and if you guys want, I can do a, a more of a step-by-step -step tutorial in another video just let me know in the comments below and I can show you guys how that all works uh, let's see so that takes care of that the last thing <laughs> if you guys thought that last list was bad wait till you see this so every morning I check the Skyrim special edition page and I look up what's new today and then I add it to my tracking list uh, yes, this is 74 pages at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15, 20 mods per page. So I'm tracking about 1,500 mods right now. <laughs> I may have a slight problem <laughs> when it comes to mods. I think it's because I used to love Pokemon when I was a kid, and I can immediately hear like the modder in the back of my head holding a Pokeball saying, gotta catch them all, gotta try them all. Yeah, I, I have a legitimate problem. Uh, yeah, so there's no shortage of mods to experiment with and try out, and a bunch of them that I haven't even dipped my toe into yet. But this load order that I've showed you guys is uh, fantastic so far. I've only crashed once up to level 40, and that was with a mage playthrough doing a lot of spells, but I didn't do a whole lot of the mage quest line. I was just kind of traveling all over the mainland of Skyrim. I'm just clarifying that, because it could be that I have a glitch in here somehow that makes it hard to run a thief playthrough with the guild, but I haven't ran that part of the quest, so I don't know if there's a bug there or not. 
but I've wandered all over Skyrim and all the holds and done a bunch of quests and this has just been really fun. And it's a nice feeling when you have a load order that is solid enough that when you're testing a new load order and it breaks, you can come back to this one and it won't bite you in the face. Uh, I guess I have a couple more minutes I can show you guys uh, my more recent one. Uh, my most recent one is Master of Magic. Uh, now that I'm testing a, yet another spell mod, because why not? I'm taking another look at not only the spells that I'm bringing in, but the method by which I'm building them. There's another um, spell development mod called Spellforge that's kind of the exact opposite of spell research. And that's another one that I'm experimenting with right now. And I'll have more for you that more about that for you guys in another month or two once I'm done tinkering with that. But this is my biggest. Oh, this isn't my biggest. No, I got to show you guys my biggest. Okay, where's my Omega playthrough? All right, this is the one I'm testing right now. This is where I'm pushing myself to my limit. That's 309 mods. Like, like half of the new mods was all just... Uh, there we go, character creation stuff. Uh, glow in the dark tattoos, feet, skin overlays, three or four more eye mods. See, this is what happens when you start getting a little more comfortable. I started off with only one set of eye mods. Now I have like five. <laughs> they grow, they grow, they grow. Uh, but I've only tested this load order for maybe an hour. It hasn't crashed, so that's promising. But I'm not going to sell you this load order in essence until I have played it for at least another 10 hours to make sure there's nothing waiting in the wings to blow up in my face. But yeah, this is, uh, this is my behind the scenes. This is what my life looks like right now after work when I get some time to mod. It's been a lot of fun learning how to get all of these mods to play well together without crashing. Uh, I am thinking about putting together some tutorials later for some of these features. Uh, obviously, loot is super important for getting your load order right. Uh, body slide is great. Uh, I've been using Ybash to get the uh, come on to get the loot dropping in the proper place. That one's very helpful. Leveled loot lists. There we go. Uh, that one's very important for that. Otherwise, you're looting like master level items at level two and wondering why that even is happening. Uh, that and then the creation kit is another good one. So all of that is coming. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video so far. If you have any other questions about my load order, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, other than that, uh, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel. Have a wonderful day, guys. Take care.